in one season, Stars has mastered Zap Lalo, one of the most rewarding armies in the game, and undoubtedly the strongest Lalo army currently. And in this video, you'll see him take down every single style of base you could possibly run into. What better place to start with than a ring base? Ring base is undoubtedly the toughest at the moment for Zap Lolo, because it's really hard to get good Sui value. Notice on this base, by the way, you can't zap both of these multi-infernos because they are four tiles apart. You can only zap things that are three tiles apart in a straight line. But notice how Stars, he could have zapped either the left multi here or the right, or the middle one, sorry. He could have zapped this or this. And the reason he's up the left one is because it sets him a better funnel. What he's trying to do, as you can see him set the funnel here, he wants to sui in through this side and get rid of the other two multi-infernos. That would leave no multi-infernos on the base and this makes it much easier for our Lalo. And we get a much better funnel if we zap out that left one because we need to zap out the middle one. How are we meant to sui both multis? Whereas now we can get both of them on, on the same side of the base. Now generally on ring bases, what you want to do, king and queen to get it, then RC on the flank. But the R, the side that the RC flanks on, you want to start your Lalo. Because you kind of want to see if you can keep your royal champion alive as long as possible. Early warden ability. Generally, you don't warden this early. But I like what he's doing here. He's trying to get the poison tower to shoot at his blimp. And then he gets the blimp to the town hall. That poison tower will hit our loons a little bit. But nowhere near as bad as it could have been. RC, notice, is still alive. Rage with the yetis to take down the town hall. And look at this. There is not a lot of anti-Lalo targets on the back end. We use the skeleton spell to tank the queen and the scatter shot and, the, well, not the sweeper, but in the same area as the sweeper. Now we freeze all three of those targets and this base is crushed. Crushed. And like, ring bases are exceptionally difficult. You should never be able to crush a ring base with Zap Lalo. But, I mean, is there anything stars can't do? That is an excellent question. But yeah, this was a perfect hit showing what to zap, which multi to go for, how to sui, early blimp with the Lalo, and you just overrun the rest. Box base here, and the town hall is a little deeper, but that's not going to change the entry we come in with. As you can see, going to get rid of the multi Inferno, the Expo, and the Sweeper. Even get one extra zap onto the Rage Tower. That's kind of the standard zap you see. You will actually see some other players will elect to go the Expo and the Rage Tower and leave the multi up. Up to you on that one. I can see why Stars has gone to get rid of the multi in this scenario, but you're about to see the work that the Rage Tower can put in. So it is a genuine toss-up you have to think about, but have a look at this, how this Sui goes first before you make up your mind. King's tanking for the Log Launcher. Queen's going on the outside of the base. Notice we're funneling her in to get the scatter shot, and it's the Log Launcher's job with the Yetis and the King. Uh to clear out the entire core of the base in reality is what we're aiming for. But look at this, a triple ice golem defensive CC. You actually don't see that as much anymore. Got a little to comment. And and I mean, the rage defenses, I just put it in so much work. And look at these yetis here. They do get the multi down, but we don't get the core of the base. Now, the defenses we've left up are not actually that bad in the end. So ultimately up to you whether you'd prefer to have a multi-inferno up but have zapped that rage tower and the whole core will be gone. Yeah, I can see it both ways, honestly. Notice early freeze there on the rage tower to make sure that rage multi is not hitting our balloons. Nice warden ability. There should be some headhunters in there, but they are stuck on the king currently. Uh, our queen is still alive, which is really nice. And yet again, we did a video on the channel recently, I'll link it above me here, of Kuma. Kuma where he used the Royal Champion, not with the Lalo. And you see the exact same from Stars here. If he used the Royal Champion with the main Lalo push, she just would have got stuck on the Town Hall Poison, and uh, we wouldn't be able to finish off the base. But by using her on, like, the outside of the base, it's a little more controlled. Uh, you know exactly where she's going to get go, what she's going to deal with. It generally helps deal with the defensive heroes as well. No defensive heroes on this, though. Only a Scatter and the RC owns the scatter shot. Another box space here, but you'll notice a few different things about this. We'll let the clock count down. 
Uh, you'll notice actually Stars takes a bit of time here, and I love this. He's not scared about time failing with this army. He'd much rather get his plan right before he goes in, because once you commit the zaps, well, you're you're committed to your plan. But let's have a look at this base here and think of zap value, because generally with uh, Zap Lalo on a box base, you'll zap something sort of in this area, then you'll log launch it through this area and Lalo the town hall. But like, think of the defenses we can zap, right? You can, you're can. you mainly looking for Expos, Multi-Infernos, and Spell Towers. And on the back end of the base here, there's just no zap value whatsoever. But by the Town Hall, look at this. That is insane value to get all three of them by the Town Hall. Now, it means we're going to come in with a slightly different plan, and maybe the base builder's hoping that Stars will be surprised by this and uh, not do something well. But this is Stars. He is, uh, he's ready for everything. And notice, by the way, we're like 15 seconds into the battle here, and he's only placed his lightning spells. He's still yet again waiting. I think this is a great lesson for you all. Do not panic. Come up with a better plan, particularly when it comes to armies, where... Time is not an issue. By the way, go back as well and have a look at his Earthquake. He places it like all the way over here to make sure he doesn't activate the Town Hall. He does hit all the defenses uh, that he's trying to hit, but he does not activate the Town Hall Genius from Stars there. Now, we're sending the King to one side, gets rid of a Tesla Farm. Pretty nice value. But the goal here is to get the Queen to go to the Town Hall. Now, you don't have an Invis spell with this army, so you need to funnel well. And this Baby Drag's doing a really... Good job. And uh, the Queen's basically guaranteed to go in at this point. Uh, she's going to take her time. Unfortunately, she can reach the Expo from the outside. Uh, it's not great for us. But the Wizard Tower, the Queen would have shot from the inside anyway. And I mean, look at this. This is insane value. But it gets more than this. This base is uh, not very well set up to stop Queens. Because look, the Queen can get the Multi Inferno here. Kind of cracked when you think about it, and that is crazy value. There's a lot of defenses left. There's a like a large quantity of defenses left, but we've gotten rid of some significant value, particularly when we're dealing with this Rage Tower nice and early. We use our Warden ability to completely negate it, and off we are. Now, the RC is with the Lala here because there's no threat of that Town or Poison. And you kind of need her to help deal with the CC anyway, because the balloons aren't going to do it. So it kind of makes a bit of sense here. I like the Stone Slammer. Uh, the cosmetic for the Stone Slammer is sick, by the way. Absolutely amazing. Clash Royale. Uh, Clash Royale. Clash of Clans uh, devs or whoever did the cosmetics. Respect to you guys. The Stone Slammer gets a big tick from me. And uh, yeah, just... I love how we didn't commit everything to the Lala as well. If this was me, I would have committed... All of my remaining Lalo into this bottom scatter. But he just slowly trickles loons around the base. Perfect freeze to get the scatter and the RC. And this is wrecked. This is completely wrecked. I believe the Stone Slammer will open in a second. Which is unfortunate. No, it won't. Yeah, he deserved that. Oh. Stars, why are you baiting me? No, I, it's just a sick hit. But yeah, if you want to learn Lalo, watch back that attack. Mute me if you have to. Watch how he deploys it. Like a heavy deployment at the start, but invests his RC, so it adds more power to it. Just a Lava Hound, a few Balloons, and a uh, Slammer from the bottom to deal with the bottom side, and a Headhunter for the Queen. And then the last Lava Hound, and a few extra Balloons to clean up the back end to make sure his Stone Slammer and RC stay in the core of the base. Onto a Diamond base here, and yet again, you're going to have to make the decision. You can zap two of the three defenses here. Which do you go for? By two of the three, I mean you've got a Rage Tower, Expo, and Multi. You can get the Expo with either of them, but not with both. Because of the four tile gap between the Rage Tower and Multi. Bases are set up like this at the moment. And really, you have to pick uh, which you want to go for. I think the Multi Inferno was the right idea on this base. But yeah, I can definitely see it both ways. Now, yet again, notice the angle of this Log Launcher. You, play, you should always be placing this log launcher deliberately because, look, these logs are going to go through and he wants to hit, ideally, all three of these defenses. Now, because the Rage Tower is up, our log launcher is actually not going to get that far in this Sui. So that's another reason to think about zapping the Rage Tower instead of the Multi Inferno. So the log launcher is not going to get as far. Doesn't help that the uh, Warden locks onto the log launcher, actually. I think that was a bigger issue here than the Rage Tower. But yeah, definitely something worth considering. Yeah, the log launcher just does not open up anywhere near enough. Nice ice golem on the outside. Our king's dealing with some of the defenses CC. Unfortunately, the rocket balloons, we don't really have anything to deal with them, and they are now raged. 
So yeah, we're, we're not gonna get an insane amount of value with this Sui, but still enough, well and truly enough here. And I really like where he places the RC because look at the look at the defenses in the area, right? You got one here, one here, one here, and if he gets rid of this cannon, which he will, the RC has really nowhere else to go but the core of the base. Like, where else is she going to go? Gets the nice health recovery. Unfortunately, uh, the monolith locks on, and we freeze a little late on the rage tower. But look, the RC gets rid of this multi that we missed with our log launcher, and away we go. And she's still alive. She hasn't got that much health, but she's well and truly doing enough. The headhunters take out the defensive RC. And look, we use the skeleton spell on the back end. I mean, the skeleton spell is always going to get value for you on a diamond base because your Lalo is either going to finish on a scatter comp or you're going to use it with your hero dive. And I mean, this is completely wrecked. And it's all about that RC. I mean, the Sui was really nice, unfortunate about the log launcher. But that RC got so much value just timing the Lalo perfectly with it. But that's the first diamond base. I've still got two more for you guys. The Zap Lalo definitely goes strong on the, uh, on the diamonds. This is a very weird diamond because it's slightly asymmetrical and look what, I mean, what is Star's going to do? Of course, you're going to zap this right side. You can hit the RC Expo Multi and Rage Tower. Anytime you can get an Expo Multi and a uh, Spell Tower, worth it. That's that's crazy value. But yeah, notice if he'd done the zap on the left side, uh, he wouldn't have got all three. Very weird sort of uh, diamond base here. I still call it a diamond, but uh, slightly atypical. So we funnel the king in to the open wall beautifully there. That's why it's really nice having the sneaky gobs with this army. I noticed some of you asked because we had TK recently do Zap Lala on the channel where he used the Ice Hound, right? I can link that above me here if you want to see it. And the Ice Hound definitely has a place with this army. My only concern is you've got two free spells with the army anyway. It's not like you desperately need the third one. Whereas like... If your heroes don't funnel in because you don't have good funneling troops, like the Sneaky Gob is, then, like, the hit's always going to fail. So, I I don't know. I see Sneaky Gobs getting value in every single attack. I don't necessarily see the same from the Ice Hound. I mean, look at that Ice Golem. We've got actually three... So, we've got two free spells and an Ice Golem. So, we've got plenty of uh, ability to stop the uh, defenses shooting back in this army. Uh, notice how we did use the skeleton spell with the RC this time because the RC had a little more damage on her than last time with the defensive RC and scatter shot. Now, really nicely timed freeze there as the town ult just activates. And I mean, we can already kind of tell this is wrecked. Times the Lava Hound to go through. And that Warden Lava Hound is literally not going to die. Uh, it will eventually in this attack, but... Not for a while. The Rage Spell on the Town Hall. Our Royal Champion is still alive. And we still got a few Balloons and a Haste Spell. I mean, just a really nice attack, honestly. A really nice attack showing how, like, this was a simple hit. That, like, Stars didn't do anything crazy here. But I want to show you it because, you know, you don't have to overthink with this army. Particularly on Diamond Bases, this uh, method of taking them down is very tried and tested. Zap, like, get rid of a... Uh, Get rid of a multi and an expo and a spell tower if you can. Log launcher through the middle to help take down key defenses. RC on the flank and Lalo through the town hall. And it's easy as one, two, three stars. This might be my favorite attack of the lot. Partly because of these first 10 seconds. Look at this. The, uh, the battle has started, but Stars is still yet to place a Zap or a Quake. Now, why is he thinking? Because there's a couple of different uh, value Zaps here. For instance, like... Look at that. You could get all three of those here. Now, that doesn't set a great funnel, uh, zapping out those buildings, and you'd probably have to sui the town all after that through the monolith. So it doesn't actually set a great funnel for the rest of the attack, but it is high value. But instead, Stars is going to go for a zap I really like. So look at this. Hits the queen. That also might be why he's waiting, because he wants to hit the queen on the exact tile. But notice he zaps the scatter, and the scatter doesn't go down, because fun fact for you all, since the June update, six zaps and one quake do does not take down a scatter. But look, there is no... There's no Builder Huts anywhere near. Where is the closest one? They're all over here. One, two, three, four, five. So that scatter shot is going to stay on low health. And do you know what Siege Machine we're using with this Sui? Exactly. The Log Launcher. Now, why hasn't he started? By the way, we're 30 seconds into the battle here and all he's done is the zaps. We're waiting for the Rage Tower to run out. We don't really want to Sui into Rage Defenses if we can help it. So just pausing and waiting like 10 seconds. 
definitely worth it. Definitely worth it, especially, you know, when it comes to a triple or not. And look, the scatter shot is down. So yes, the six zaps and one quake only got the expo and the rage tower out well and damaged the queen. But I'm going to take that as it also took down the, uh, uh, the scatter shot. Even though it needed one last hit from the log launcher, that scatter shot never fired a shot in this battle. Kind of crazy to think about. Log Launcher doing good work here. Unfortunately, it will leave the single Inferno on 1 HP. But that's fine. I believe our Queen should step in here. The Yeti is doing a great job on the top side. Interesting though, have a look at this base. We did not use the RC on the flanks. And why is that? Well, there's no like value on the flanks of this, right? Look. Look at this. There's one, Those are three ground defenses. No real value in doing that. And it's kind of same on the top side. Could get an air defense. Uh, but coming in on delay, that's quite quite funny as actually that the RC's coming on delay. My point was he's not using the RC immediately with the Sui. You waiting until there's a proper funnel and then using the RC to set a nice funnel for his Lalo. Queen is going to get rid of the Eagle if I'm not mistaken. And this, uh, this base is wrecked. Yeah, the queen gets rid of the eagle here. Like, kind of ludicrous to think about. The RC will go down because the rage defenses are OP. But that's okay. She just had to clear that side of the funnel so our loons could go into the core and do their work. And this is clapped. Quite clapped. I actually don't know why I left this attack for last. Should have put this earlier in the video. But to those of you who made it this far, I hope you feel properly rewarded because this is one of the best attacks of the entire video. But yeah, that's it for us. If you want to see more Stars content, in about two days we'll be dropping Stars base, his base link he used last season, so stay tuned for that. We've also got uh, Stars uh, a live stream he did about a week and a half ago that I will link. Actually, no, it was last weekend that I will link on the left. Make sure you watch that Stars and Synthate Dominating Legends League live on the channel.